the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My beloved one, today is 25th day of July, being Tuesday, and we are still not night time of the church calendar year A. Today, the morning church is celebrating St. James the Apostle. It's a feast day. And readings will be coming from St. Paul's letter to the second letter, St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 7 to 15. A response to Psalm will come from Psalm 126, verse 5a. A gospel message will come from Matthew Gospel, chapter 20, verse 20 to 28. The theme of our message today is drinking the chalice of Jesus. Drinking the chalice of Jesus. Or drinking the chalice Jesus will drink. Or drinking the chalice Jesus drank. So we're talking about the chalice of Jesus. What is the chalice of Jesus? Chalice is out of the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice he made. For the glory of God and for good of all that, that's the chalice. How can I thank the Lord for his goodness to me? I'll lift up the cup of salvation and give thanks to God. Call upon his holy name. The chalice of salvation. The chalice of the Lord of Jesus. So drinking the chalice of Jesus is to go the path of Jesus with. And that's why today in the gospel we were told that the mother of James and John, this wife of Zebedee, came to Jesus and asked for something. And Jesus said, well, woman, what do you want? He said, Commander, one of all these, my two sons, who are your apostles, one will sit on your right and one on your left, when you come to your kingdom. And he told the woman, you don't know what you are asking for. And they asked the sons, are you able to drink the chalice I will drink? They said, we're able. He said, the chalice we drink, but to, for who will be on my left and right is for, not for me to assign that, but my father, which he prepared for those who deserve it. It's my father who allows that to those who deserve it. And when they tell her about this, they were mad with these two brothers who were lobbied for me of petroleum and finance. But they didn't know what they were asking for, for robbing. And Jesus called the apostle to himself and said, look, you know that the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them. The king of the Gentiles lord it over them. As you can see, we are being, we, how they are rolling over nations and rolling over nations and rolling over the people, the Gentiles, people who don't know God. They lord it over others. They lord it over their people. And their rich men make, allow, make the authority be felt. Yes, the rich men make the authority to be felt by the people. Yes. Show you, they can detain you, they can pull down your house, can do anything to you, no, resp no, no response from you. You cannot, otherwise you will be killed too. They can kill you, no person will question them. Their kings lord it over them, and their rich men made the authorities be felt by them people. He says, so should not be mentioned among you, should not be among you. Anyone who will be want great among you must be your servant. And the one who wants to be faced among you must be your slave. And the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give out his life as a ransom for many. Do you see? That's the chalice. He came to serve, not to be served, and to give out his life as a ransom for many. That's what he called them the chalice you have to drink. To give out your life for the glory of God and for the good of others. Not for yourself. Self-sacrifice. And that's what the chalice of Christ is all about. And now why today Paul was talking to the Corinthians about this sacrifice. 
He said, we have this treasure in 18 ware vessels. This great treasure is in 18 ware vessels. We can break any second, any little fragile. To show that the transcendent power belongs to God, not to us. To show this transcendent power belongs to God. Ability to give yourself for the glory of God and for others is not your own making. It's the power of God. You can't do it on your own. So to show that power belongs to God, not to us. We are afflicted in every way. We are afflicted in every way. As you serve God, that you are afflicted in every way. But you are not crushed. But please, but never driven to despair. Do you see what the undergo when you take the chalice of Christ? When you want to take the chalice of Christ? Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. He said, always carrying the, in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake. As far as you live, you are giving up to death for Jesus' sake every day in different forms. So that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh, so that death is always at work in us, but life is in you. And death is in us, life is in you. Our death gives you life. Yes, that's what it means. He became poor to make others rich. He became a slave to make others free born, free peer to save. He lowered himself to lift others up. Do you see what it means? It became a cause to bless others. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. He became man to make us gods. Galatians 4, 4 to 5. He became poor to reach us. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. You see, this is the chalice you have to drink if you are in him. So death is always at work in us, for life is in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith as he had, as he, or have the spirit of faith as he had, who wrote, I believe so I spoke, so we too believe, and so we speak. Knowing that he who raised Jesus Christ will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. With this hope, in face of all these sufferings. For it is all for your sake. So that the grace extended to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. More grace to about to accept the chalice of Christ. To drink the chalice of Christ, more glory of God will come. And now what the psalmist who understood this so well today, they say, those who are so in tears will sing when they live. All these who have been taking the chalice of God, they will celebrate when they live. You sow in sorrows, but you will live in joy. That's all what the chalice of God is all about. You drank it in sorrows, we celebrate in joy with Christ. And now when we're celebrating St. James the Apostle today, he drank the chalice. And we're celebrating the glory of God in him. He glorified God by his taking the chalice. Glorify God and live for others. Sacrifice them for the good of others. For the salvation of others. And God exalted him and glorified him as the apostles. And how we celebrate the church, celebrating his feast day today. You have seen is the son of Zebedee, twin brother to John. And you can see how their mother intervened for them, robbing for them. But see how the, what is important is that they should live out the apostolic, they, they, they're able to take the chalice of Christ. May God help us understand that they, to take the chalice of God is to live for the glory of God and to sacrifice our faith for the good of others. We ask through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. 
May the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of us. We're able to take the chalice of God, of Jesus, and share in him. Of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you all. Yeah, 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 yeah